This presentation extends Microsoft Dynamics AX shop floor to top floor information in real time, where we connect the ERP into the MES system on a two-way link. The productivity improvement is typically 10 to 50 percent a value proposition for companies, a very fast to deploy, quick return on investment, lowest total cost of ownership. So a significant improvement in productivity on 10 percent can translate to a 60 percent profitability improvement. How do we do it? Through an automated approach to data collection, where we have physically connect to the actual machines, pull out signals from the machines directly. So if you can measure what's happening on the shop floor, then you can manage the top floor, all in concert with your operators. If you adhere to the ISA 95 standards of machine connectivity, an ERP system Microsoft Dynamics AX is level 4, where the machine is level 0. Merlin offers a connection from level 3, 2, and 1, so to connect level 4 directly to level 0, in a two-way link, taking production orders from Dynamics AX right to the machine, executing, and then sending the results back. With the data collection model here, you can see that Dynamics AX connects through to Merlin, sends the information down to the machine, the operator executes at the machine, sends the information back up through the connection and back in through to be able to re report it at Dynamics AX. A whole manufacturing execution system at layer 3, distributed control system at layer level 2, and at uh, level 1 is a whole connection to the machines. In this particular example, we're going to show you how the production work orders can be sent directly to the Merlin MES system, and that's part of the D Dynamics AX environment. And results will be sent back from Merlin directly to AX. So in this example, you see that we've actually recorded the results back into AX. So let's get started and actually show a particular demonstration. In this particular case here, we're working with Microsoft Dynamics AX. We're seeing the environment that we're st st uh, setting up here. We're testing and filtering through. We can see that we don't have any particular work order numbers uh, ending in 2-3 that we're going to run through here. So we create a production order. And we're going to type in our production order number as a new one to create it here, ending in 2-3. We're going to find the item number that we want to deal with, and we search for that one, pull that up using Dynamics itself, and we'll pull out this particular one. It's already pre-set up in terms of in the product standards. We're going to see how that's set up there. So we create the actual work order, production order within Dynamics AX. So when we find it here and we go and search to see if we can find it directly, so we type it into the filter find the particular ones, you'll see that the one ending in 2-3, we've actually highlighted and we found it here. So now, let's go ahead and process this. We see within Microsoft, uh, within the Merlin environment, we check our dashboard, we see the particular machines, and you can see machine 102, and it is not running any particular work order that we've established yet, other than the, uh, the ones that are currently there in the job queue. We pull up the job queue, we take a look and search, we can see that the ones from Dynamics AX ending in 2.3 have not been entered yet. So now we turn around and say, okay, let's estimate this particular production order using Dynamics AX functionality. We create that. We'll see that the status gets changed to estimated in this particular case here. So we know we're in the right track in terms of moving forward. We then uh, highlight the particular order again. We take a look at the details here. If we go check the routing at, in itself, we'll see here that the routing is set up with six different operation steps, 10 through 15. And we see that we have resource requirements defined on the particular machines in itself. If we check the resource machines, it is resource 102, so that's the actual machine that we're working with under the Merlin Manufacturing Execution System environment. Again, machine 102, we drill down to that through Merlin, we take a look, there's the machine, we see it's not the same work order. So now we go back to the job queue. We see it still isn't in there itself. We're dealing with machine 102. We can see the current work orders and the ones that are in the queue in itself running. We move forward here. We take a look at our visual job queue. And you can see that we can add edit here and look. And again, on machine 102, the particular work order that we want has not been entered yet. So we go back to Dynamics AX in itself. And let's schedule this particular operation. So we should do the scheduling operations. 2-3 is the one we want to end, end up with. We say OK, let's schedule that. We hit OK. And you see now that the production order has been sent electronically to the Merlin MES system. 
So we click OK. We're good to go on this one. So we now know it's being sent into the MAS system. And we're going to check that and see the status is set up as scheduled. We see it's working properly there. We double check on the routing just to be sure that everything is there in place. And we see it comes up here. Again, there's the six particular operation steps in the routing. The resource requirements are taken care of, 102. So we're good to go from there. And we can sit back and say, okay, now for that particular one, let's actually start this particular one and make sure that it's actually running on the uh, at the MES level system. So we say that's okay, it's ready to go. So now we go to the job queue. Notice it's not there. We hit the refresh button at this point within Merlin and look, all those operation steps have now been populated. So we've automatically electronically loaded it from Dynamics AX into the uh, Merlin system from Memex. We check in the details here, show the job queue, look at the details. Again, there's those six particular operation steps have been entered. If we go to the actual operator interface terminal, machine 102, we see the multiple machines. We check at the work order list. There you go. All of uh, those six particular operation steps and work orders are entered into the system. And so we say, you know what, let's uh, accept this one. Let's start operation number 10. And so uh, the w operation number 10 has, has started at this point. You can see we've got the proper product ID. Uh, it's uh, synchronized with the main server to make sure everything's together. We go check the dashboard. We can see that the operation step 10 is the new work order that's in place. If we check on the um, job queue in itself. We refresh it at this point here. Again, we're synchronizing the main system. And we can see that it, in fact, as is the current running work order. And we see here that the particular job now has reset its parts. So zero parts made as this production order is set to go. Uh, it's been loaded up and ready and it's running. And we see here at the particular work order at the operator level is there. Zero parts made. Parts required is five. And we can see that on the checking the work orders that it's already been running through. So we know we now know that we're running. You can see that in full detail. There's much more operations here. If we check some of the machine status, machine down reasons, operator down reasons, machine modes, uh, sending email capabilities that we can work with, uh, quick barcode scanning. You can see these can be done directly from the operator screen in itself. Uh, the operator can send out these emails, or the machine can in fact send out these emails directly as connected into the environment. So the work order is running, and we're now up to work order 15 as time has passed. Jobs have been run and run through. So we can see we're running uh, work order 15, the last one of the six operation steps. You can see that we've had zero parts made. We've got uh, parts required of five. So we're just starting this particular job as the final operation step. We check the job queue in itself. We refresh it. We can see that this is the last one that's running. The other ones have already been run through and processed. We go into the visual job queue to take a look visually, and you can see where we highlight the particular job is the one ending in 15. So we're running through here on the dashboard. We can see job number 15. We've moved forward. And we've actually made four parts, one of which is a particular reject. So this is important in terms of our tracking. We can see here that we've made three good parts and one reject parts for a total of four parts made of the five, five parts required. So we have the detail in terms of what we're working with. And if we go back and we again check in detail on the down and rejects, we take a look uh, specifically at what we're working with, it's the machine 102. We can see that uh, the one particular reject part is not applicable. So some particular generic area, error code for that for downtime. We see we can track it on a visual graphic basis. So easy way to look at the information all captured together and running. So we're seeing here where we're running, we're completing here. We've now moved into production hold, and notice with all the parts have been done, oh, the job has just been shifted over to a new work order. So we literally just automatically caught it right there as it was shifting from one work order to the next. And you can see the work orders have changed. We're resetting the particular status, and we're up and going. 
If we go back and check one of the little features within Merlin is the history editor. So we pull this up and this is just a way of verifying actual information of what happened. This is all posted in the history. We keep track of it. So we search by date. We search by the, all the jobs. We find the particular job that we're looking for. And we expand it a bit to see. We can see it's number 15. We can see we had five parts made, one reject. Go to the list of downtown down reject reasons we see not applicable, which was one of the particular ones that was there. So yes, we've captured that information and it's in the history records within Merlin. Of course, this information we will then use to populate back into Dynamics AX, which we'll show you very shortly. From a reporting perspective, we can also look at the history. So again, a very powerful way to look at it. We drop down the report writer, we do a search on the particular work order that we want to access. We see it right here, pick it on the list which is machine 102, work orders. We have lots of filtering and selection criteria that we can deal with. We have uh, sorting and subtotaling that we can work with, so lots we can deal with there. All kinds of date ranges, and filtering, and so on. So we do a print preview, so a running report to see what did Merlin, in fact, actually capture. So we notice here, we have the uh, OE summary report, we've got the date and the time, we've got the work order that was just completed, we see the overall fic effectiveness, we see it made five parts of which one was a reject, so we now actually have our quality data in terms of the reporting information that's there from a historical perspective. So we can see we're back at the dashboard. Let's go take a look at what happened in Microsoft Dynamics, because that information is now sent back to Microsoft Dynamics. View that particular production work order. Take a, a quick view of the details here. We go to the reported as finished section, so to know what was actually, been in fact, particular run here. So we uh, check on the particular lines in that particular job. And we run through. If you notice, as we highlight in here, we've actually got six or four good quantity parts and one error part in terms of rejects. So again, for the exact product number we're running. So now we know that we have captured from that work order, coming all the way back from the execution system back into Dynamics AX for a high degree of accuracy. And just for uh, a little fun, we bring out our strip chart here within Merlin, which is a real-time dynamic calculation of what's going on. We take a look at individual machines, and we can then highlight every particular event, every second of the particular day in terms of operations. We know exactly what was happening, which particular job. We see that the production hold here was when they were actually changing jobs from uh, work order to uh, from different products and different work orders. So let's uh, put it into production hold while they did the setup range. And if we take the timeline, we can see that we have a magnifying glass. We slide it over in time. We turn the magnifying glass off and on just to view it. We can see that we can slide over in time frame. And we see a lot. We have a lot more blue ones over earlier. We can expand the scope to look at things in terms of detail. So now we've really got some areas that we can play with and understand in terms of what's happening. So here's a particular work order as one of the op steps that we ran that was earlier. We can see the different setups that we're going through within the blue. So again, taken care of. One of the other neat little features of Merlin is you can dynamically have a view of your shop floor, lay out your own graphical. Uh, floor layout, uh, put on particular icons for each of the machines, and there are real-time status of what, uh, what's actually operating the machine. You can show that information, and you can see here in real time as it changes colors and so on. We're also, the Merlin environment is connected with Dynamics AX right up on the roll center. Uh, it's a very much an automatic data collection from the machine as an electronic traveler to work with Dynamics AX on the shop floor. It really complements the Microsoft Business Solutions strategy with huge real-time machine visibility and value added, typically a 10 to 50% improvement in efficiency and a three-month payback. Definitely worthy of working with Dynamics AX.